It's May 6, 2011, and you are watching Webinar Friday with uh, Link, the Link Seattle show that highlights group members telling the broader community about their ideas or businesses. And Link Seattle, of course, is the largest professional networking group in the Pacific Northwest with over 27,000 members as of today. And I'm Michael Sirkan, the Chief Evangelist of Link Seattle. And we have a guest today who I'll introduce in just a minute, but we welcome any other group members who would like to present their ideas and their and some of their expertise to the, the community as well. And we'll we, we're delighted to publish that to the broader community. And today we have uh, one of our members with us. Matt Crevin, who's the founder of Voice of the Box, who's going to be giving some very interesting career advice around sports. Welcome, Matt. Well, thanks, Michael. I appreciate it, and it's uh, great to be here on Webinar Friday. Uh, Link Seattle is a great site. I'm going to tip my hat to you real quickly. Um, I know the value of LinkedIn. I've used it uh, quite extensively, and, and being a Seattle transplant, I'm not a native. I know how helpful it was, so uh, thank you for having this great forum. It's, it's wonderful. Um, as Michael mentioned, uh, I'm the founder of a company called Voice of the Box. And Voice of the Box is my own little baby, as I say. Uh, I've had some corporate background in my life, and which we're going to get to. And uh, I like to just title this presentation that I'm going to deliver today. It's called Get in the Game Off the Field. And what does that really mean? Uh, Voice of the Box, I'm a career coach. I'm dedicated to the sports industry. And my target market are college students, graduate students, and young professionals that are looking to break into a career in sports, but off the field all the business side of the sports. There's so many opportunities, wonderful careers for college students and young professionals. Many of them are hidden. We're going to get into a lot of that. But that's where Voice of the Box comes in. And I started this as a hobby of mine. And uh, I'll share a little more detail as we, as we move on. Uh, but again, I'm real excited to be here and, and share some ideas. Got a lot of great content that I want to share out there. Uh, but before I start, a lot of this content, you may be thinking, well, I'm not a sports fan. And I'm really don't, I'm not interested in a career in sports. And that's okay. You may not be a sports fan. You don't have to be, but you may not, and you also may not be pursuing a career in sports. But you may know someone else that might be interested in this. Uh, this is quite a universal platform that I'm going to talk about here in my presentation. Even though my expertise is in the career field of the sports industry, it is quite universal to anyone that's looking for some good techniques that can help someone break into their career, whatever that focus might be, sports or other. So without further ado, I'm going to just kind of roll into it. We've got a lot of good things to cover. I wanted to show you a quick picture of me, not because I combed my hair and showered that day, but because it's nice to put a face and a voice together, and uh, it kind of brings it, uh, brings it full circle. It makes me a little more human, I think, uh, especially over a webinar format. So who is Matt Crevin? You might be asking, you know, a lot of people, you may not know me, uh, and that's fine. Uh, I'm actually born and raised down in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I'm currently living up here, actually in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, I was in Seattle initially, but now over in Bellevue. And uh, real happy to be up here. I've been up in the Seattle market for about five and a half years now. I put this picture up because, again, sports has been a big piece of my life. This happens to be the trophy case at the world headquarters of the San Francisco 49ers. This is the first thing that anyone who walks into their training complex sees. And it is extremely overwhelming when you see it live and in person. This trophy case is what I saw the day I walked in for my internship interview back in 1991. Super Bowl trophies staring at me, NFC titles staring at me, players wandering around. And at that time, I don't want to make this a history 101 course, but anyone that follows football, there were legends walking in the hallway, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Steve Young, just to name a few. This is where it all started for me, was at the 49ers World Headquarters. And, and it began for me right there as, you know what? This could, I could either, this was going to make or break me, if I, I always like to say that. This, I was overwhelmed, staring at all this wonderful, you know, legendary trophies of this wonderful team in, in professional sports. If they saw that I was nervous when I was walking into my interview, I probably would have gotten shot out of the water. I somehow remained calm inside. Yes, I had a little sweaty beads of perspiration on the outside of my hands, but I remained calm, and I think that really helped uh, down the road. I've had some parallel careers, which really brings me some credibility and, more importantly, perspective as to what I do. I've worked for Microsoft and also for FedEx uh, over the last 17 years, which has been wonderful. And I don't just share these companies to say, ooh, wow, I've worked for some great companies. Yes, they are great companies. 
but more importantly, not that I've worked there, but what I've learned while I've been there. That's the biggest takeaway, and that's what I bring that, these two opportunities that have been a big part of my business life, my professional life, and I match it with my opportunity that I've been working with the 49ers simultaneously for the past 18 years. That is the perspective I bring. I'm matching my real world corporate experience, the wonderful experiences I've learned with FedEx and Microsoft, and I match that with my sports industry knowledge, connections, and experience. And that's how I formed Voice of the Box. Just as another little side note, uh, and like I said, you don't always have to be an athlete to get into the sports business. Sometimes it's actually preferred that you're not. But uh, in a lot of cases, it does help. I happen to have a little background myself as an international rugby player. I played for Maccabi USA and been really fortunate to travel the world. I play rugby in seven countries. So I'm real proud of that. And it's the experiences, again, not that I've played there, but the experiences that, I've, that I draw from day to day about being an athlete on an international level that uh, it really helps in a business setting. Here's a great shot, not only because it's nice and sunny and we're up here in Seattle and we're still waiting for spring to peak out, but this is my office actually during the season. This is a picture of Candlestick Park on a nice sunny day. And uh, for the last 11 of the 18 years that I've been with the 49ers, I do the stadium public address announcing. Uh, which is a huge, huge bonus. It's a great, fun perk for me. I love what I do. And this is just a quick shot of, hey, this is the kind of a view that I get every Sunday during the NFL season, so it's a lot of fun. But really, it's more about, uh, you know, the bottom line for me. What is the bottom line? It's, you know, hey, life has sent me a number of different opportunities that I've had, both in my corporate life and in my sports industry, but it's also sent me challenges. I've been through promotions. I've been through some layoffs. At the end of the day, all of these things that happen to all of us in our workday lives, you know what, we need to be shaped uh, by them, but it's really more important how you respond to them. And that's a big lesson that I always like to share because not everything is going to be a smooth road. It just won't be. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's really important how you respond to these challenges when you're presented with them, and that's how you learn, and that's how you grow. And I know this sounds somewhat trite, but you know what, hey, I plan my work, and now I'm really busy working my plan. And it sounds something that you probably would hear back in high school or by your parents. Trust me, it's very true. Uh, so I like to kind of put that in there and it just keeps me grounded in terms of, you know, work the plan, consistently work your plan. So why sports for me? Sports for me, as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's wonderful because in my personal opinion and back, back on some scientific research, the sports industry as a whole is one of the four global languages in the world, others being arts, music, and religion. I can go anywhere in the world, and I have been lucky enough to go to some different countries around the world, and you can talk sports. You will have a bond with someone. You can't necessarily do that with politics. You can't necessarily do that with other areas. But these others, you can always go and have a conversation. So sports is really wonderful. And you know what? The Olympics is probably the best example of this. I mean, that's where the world comes together on a global stage. Sports is really the focal point, but it's so much more than that. It's how we bond as people. Why did I start Voice of the Box? You know what, Voice of the Box was really started because I had a vision and I wanted that vision to share all this wonderful inside information that I've learned over the last 18 years. And it's not just inside information that's from my corporate life, but it's part of that. But I combine it with my sports industry knowledge and I bring it together and provide pertinent, fresh, and unique content. And students need this, graduate students need this, and young professionals need this because it's really a nice augment to probably what they've learned in college. This isn't to replace textbooks, but it's really, it's really unique content because I'm living, walking proof of someone that's been not only in the college chair and in the lecture halls, but now I've taken it to the real world and I can share all those experiences. I target it to the sports industry professionals, more importantly, sports industry hopefuls, people that want to break into this type of business. So that's my vision. My focus for Voice of the Box is really to cover all sports industry segments. My, my specific niche and how I started was in the National Football League with the 49ers, as I mentioned earlier. But because of my, the great fortune I've had to be with the 49ers, it's presented so many opportunities for me to meet people that are in sports broadcast, sports apparel, ticket sales, sports nutrition and science. Many people outside the NFL, Major League Baseball, National Basketball League, university and college level jobs, it goes on and on. So I focus on all of these with the exception of coaching 
and the actual athletes themselves because to me that's pretty self-explanatory how you get that type of a job. For me, you know, I've always wanted to provide and have Voice of Box really, you know, be the, the key differentiator in, the, in what I provide is, is highly targeted information and it's really geared from my market or my audience to not only learn but to be able to take action on it, implement something right away. That is what I'm just a big believer in the way I want to do that is because in my corporate life I've sat through so many different corporate trainings and you take three or four months to get one piece of information. Mine is not that way. Uh, we're going to get into my coaching model in a bit, but again, it's really targeted information, really geared to help someone pick up and learn, absorb it, and take action on it right away. And an insider secret. Well, what is an insider secret? I consider myself an insider because I have access to not only the NFL, but 18 years worth of contacts in the sports industry. It's perspective. To meet with someone and to gain knowledge from someone that has perspective is so valuable. Um, there's a lot of people that have perspective, absolutely. I'm just one of them. I have a unique perspective. Again, my perspective, as we mentioned earlier, is bringing 17 years of corporate America experience, and I am connecting that, and I have finally married it to with my sports industry knowledge. So that's, that's the perspective that I bring. And you know, you can either go one way or the other with this. And I'm not here to be doom and gloom and say, hey, you're going to be a failure if you don't work with me, and you're going to be a success if you do. That's not it at all. But there are two different tracks that you can go on, and it's quite honestly, it's pretty easy to have a quick misstep, and then you really have to dig, dig to get back on that success track. So I bring this up because there's so many other hidden opportunities that a lot of people that are interested in breaking into a career in sports that they that they think of. They say, let's let's think of up here in the Seattle market. Wow, you know what? I grew up as a Seattle Seahawks fan. They're my favorite team. That's where I want to work. That's all fine and well, but guess what? There are thousands of people that have that same exact dream. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have dreams and goals because that's not it at all, but you need to be realistic and also have a plan B, a plan C, and quite honestly, even a plan D of how you can get in, break into the industry. It may not be with the team that you want to work with right away, but if you get in and break in and get some knowledge, then you've got some applicable knowledge that you can leverage again. I've got Gatorade here because that's a wonderful company and there's so many opportunities to get into sports nutrition other than working just for Gatorade as an example. There's media relations, there's sports science, there's sports nutrition. Social media is extremely white hot right now in every single sports franchise from the professional level all the way down to the professional volleyball tour has a social media presence. So if you've got some technical aptitude, that's a wonderful arena right now. Sports apparel, community relations, ticketing, it goes on and on. There's so many other hidden opportunities. But what will it take? You know, it takes so much more than just a baseline passion for sports. I hear this all the time when I speak at universities across the U.S. Well, I, I love sports. I, I watch Sports Center three times a day. Guess what? That just doesn't cut it anymore. Being a sports fan and saying you can repeat batting averages or you can repeat who won all the Super Bowls, that, that's great when you're in a sports trivia contest. But to get a job in this industry, it takes more than just that. You need to kind of match that with a technical aptitude. And I'm, I like to bring this, you know, kind of one example, just to kind of make it really clear, is nothing else happens in sports unless tickets are sold. I'm just using the ticket sales business as one little example. No parking revenue is consumed, no advertising revenue, no concessions. Again, nothing happens in sports, regardless of what level of sports, until the turnstile moves. So ticket sales is a great opportunity to really break in. Just by sheer attrition, there's always opportunities for people to sell. Now, am I saying that everyone should go out and be a salesperson? Of course not. But it's a great opportunity to break in and then work your way up the ladder. I always like to present this little, next little bit of information because it's kind of eye-opening. A lot of people don't realize this. But, hey, how many events do does, does you guys really think take place each year when you combine you know, college football and basketball with pro football, pro baseball, and pro basketball? And I always ask people, hey, take a guess. What do you think? And some people say, well, a couple hundred. or you know, uh, 55,000 events. Well, when you really look at it, there's over 11,200 events each and every year. Now, why do I bring this up? It's not that I want you to go out and be a ticket salesperson. That, that's a great way to break in, by the way, but that's really not just it. Because there's over 11,000 events, think of all the other, you know, ancillary areas that one can break in. You've got event management, you've got security, you've got so many different areas that you can, you know, game operations. There's so many events and ways that you can get in, volunteer, and this is just one of them. So I like to use that as just an example. 
what's a good place to start? I like to throw out a concept uh, to the people that, you know, when I do these conversations and, and work with people in my coaching practice to create yourself an advisory board. Now, that sounds a little goofy when you're in college or maybe just out. You say, well, what does that mean? I can't just go out and start building an advisory board. And, and yes, you're right. But there's a way to start this process. And LinkedIn is a wonderful opportunity. It's a great way to connect with people. It already has the built-in, uh, you know, professionalism and integrity in place for you. And just by sheer nature of the way conversations go, you're going to probably be in touch with more people uh, or a few select people more times than not. Those people are going to be tending to be in your inner circle or your advisory board. You've got professors. You've got career coaches like myself. You've got your alumni networks if you're still in college. You always want to combine all of these and strive to surround yourself with people you can learn from. I still do this today. I'm, I'm 19 years into business, and I'm still always on the market to look for people that I can connect with, that I can add to my personal advisory board because I can learn from them. I can be on others and I can share my knowledge, but I'm always looking to be around people I can learn from. So that's a nice little message that I always like to put out there. What's the voice of the box secret? Well, there is no real secret sauce or one magic bullet, but if I had to put it down one, it's, it's really my 4P coaching model. This is the secret, and, uh, and I'm not saying we should all whisper it. But this is something that I've, that I've taken away, and I've, it's, it's been derived and, and boiled down from my time at Microsoft and my time at FedEx, and I've combined it with all my sports industry knowledge and the years of experience and people that have mentored me, and I've come up with a 4P coaching model. Kind of convenient, because all words start with the letter P. You've got position. And I'm going to get into this in more detail in a, just a moment. The second P is promotion, and you've got package, and then you've got partnerships. Now let's get into a little more detail just quickly as a high level. You've got position. How are you going to position yourself and position your message to the target market that you might be going after? So whether it's the sports industry or whether it's another industry, it doesn't have to be sports. This is the universal model that I work with. I happen to place it into the sports industry, but I work with a lot of clients that aren't interested in sports. They love my model. They see the benefit of it. The first one is position. In a nutshell, you've got your resume. That's part of, part of you know, what you need. I call that the necessary evil uh, because it, just, it does one thing very, very well. It tells people what you've done, but it doesn't do a very good job of telling people what you want to do. So the first thing I work with people and, and kind of coach people and tell them, create a positioning statement for yourself. It's a paragraph. It's nothing longer. Extract a little bit out of your resume, but more importantly, pos position yourself. Use some leveraging words and some good verbiage that's going to best articulate what you want to do. Where do you want to go? That's the first step that I always work with people. Not only now do you have it in writing, but you've also got the opportunity to use that as your verbal pitch. You know, everyone always says, well, what's your elevator pitch? Well, what does that mean? For those of you that may not know, if you're at a networking event and someone says, hey, Matt, nice to meet you. Tell me what you do. Guess what? I can quickly rattle off my positioning statement. And it happens over time. You own the words. It comes out clear, smooth, and with confidence. And that's what I work with people. That's the first P. So really, what's the statement of purpose that you can use in writing and to verbalize during informational meetings or just networking events? Then you've got promotion. This is one of my favorites because how are you going to effectively and professionally promote yourself? And this is I get the biggest amount of pushback. No matter where I go and who I'm speaking to, they say, listen, I'm a young person professional. I, haven't, I don't have that many jobs yet on my resume. What do I really have to promote? And this is where I say I beg to differ. You've got some things that you need to promote. I love this quote and I live by it. And uh, for those of you that have ever been to the circus, either as a kid, uh, the, you know, Barnum and Bailey Circus, this is by uh, P.T. Barnum. Something terrible happens without promotion. Nothing. Does that mean you need to stick There's an effective way to go out and promote yourself, and that's a really big balance that I always strive to help with my clients of finding that balance between ego and being humble. We all have egos. We all need to balance it with being humble. But promotion is something that I work with in depth uh, to how to effectively talk about yourself and promote yourself to the right audience. There's plenty of ways, as I mentioned, to promote yourself. Let's just use LinkedIn as one example, a subgroup, all the different groups. There's great ways to get out and promote without overstepping your bounds and being perceived as someone that's just, quote unquote, you know, tooting your own horn. Packaging. This is a real big one. There's a mind shift here that I firmly believe really needs to take shape. It's not only how are you going to package yourself to a particular employee. I say, listen, you know what? You need to, you know, 
really get out there and consider yourself the chief marketing officer of your own brand. There's a person that I actually rely on quite heavily. He's a great mentor of mine, and he taught me, listen, you need to be the CMO of, of me, Inc., meaning yourself. You've got to control your brand. People that are on Facebook and you're putting pictures up there that probably uh, shouldn't be up there, and you all, you all know what that means, that's your brand. Guess what, guys and girls? You know, people look at that stuff, so you need to be very careful about how you brand yourself. The analogy I like to give is when people go to the market and they buy, let's say, your favorite shampoo, your favorite loaf of bread, and your favorite deodorant, whatever they are, there's reasons why you go out and buy those things. This is marketing 101. It's, it's priced right, or hey, it's what my mom and dad used to buy for me and I, I love it, or you know what, it's endorsed by one of my favorite artists or athletes or singers. But there was a reason that you picked those things off the shelf versus the competition that's on that same shelf. What was that reason? Think of that as you, next time you're shopping, but tr transition that into how can you package yourself better to give someone else the call to action to buy you. They're not buying you, but they're going to hire you. You get the idea here. So a, the good packaging is really going to support your message, and it's really going to tell your story in a way that it's going to support, you know, support your position. So packaging comes in the favor, you know, flavor of, hey, that's part, it's your resume. It's now your statement of purpose. Your packaging can be, let's say you want to be you're an aspiring broadcaster, you're going to have your demo reel, or you're a graphic designer, that's going to be your portfolio. You see the picture here. Kind of put yourself together a physical package, have an envelope. In today's click and send world, everyone's so easy and just wants to click send, and then you just hope that it gets into someone's inbox. And you know what, by the way, if hope is your strategy, you're done. Let's do something that takes hope out of this equation. Let's, let's, you know, hey, I'm not saying go out and FedEx everything overnight and spend a bunch of money or, but you know what, look at DHL, look at the U.S. Mail Service, three-day your resume, three-day your statement of purpose to someone, put it in a folder with a business card. If you have a web address, put that on there. If you have a blog, put that on there. Position yourself and package yourself a little bit differently. People love opening up regular mail because the inbox gets, everyone's email inbox gets flooded to the nth degree. So. Packaging is, the, is one of the big keys. And then we wrap it up, you know, hey, listen, you're the chief marketing officer of your own brand. Protect your brand. Put it out there in the best light. Be mindful of what you're doing. Everyone loves Facebook and Twitter in this day and age, but just be careful about what you're doing out there because people will see it. And if they see that there's things that, you know, that don't represent you as a brand or you as an individual, they'll move on to the next candidate. And then the last P is partnerships. And quite honestly, this is the biggest value that I bring to the party. Because really, at the end of the day, how are you planning on partnering with others to get your message out? Am I the only person that you should partner with? Of course not. But I'm a very big key of someone that you should partner with. I mentioned you know, your advisory board, your inner circle are going to be people that are going to help. But this is you know, a value that I bring. It's how you know, planning on partnering with me is, is, is a great opportunity. LinkedIn, of course. A career coach, as I mentioned, that's someone like myself. Your advisory board, these are all people that you can now leverage on helping you get your message out there. I don't guarantee this to anyone, but when I work with people during my coaching practice and they're in the sports industry and they say, you know what, gosh, I'd really love to break into Nike or Adidas. I love sports apparel. And I happen to have those contacts at those two companies. And as an example, I do. I send out introductory emails on their behalf saying, you know what, I'm working with Steve Smith. He's a, uh, he's a young professional who's looking to make his break. Would you be interested and willing to have a 15 minute informational phone call with him? I didn't ask for an interview. I didn't ask, do you have any job openings? Because that's too easy for people to say no. And then I'm one and done. More importantly, you're one and done. You have no comeback from that. So lots of different ways that I help people learn about the fine nuance of asking for an informational interview. So you know, if you're going to draw up a roadmap for your career, you know, where would it end up? And it's always not a bad idea just to have these pie in the sky draft up a roadmap. What does it look like to you? What's a perfect world scenario? Let's shoot for something, and then we can create an action plan off of that. This is an interesting little piece that I always like to roll out. It's most people mention the job, or they mention the specific job segment. How about turn a little twist to this? Instead, when you get the chance to meet with a hiring manager, let that person know what value you can bring to a specific function, and then match that with your passion. So the little twist of the dial kind of might help create a little unique differentiator for yourself. Let's, uh, let's kind of just go back and, and have some key points here that we want to go back and remember because that, that personally I think are important. The true value of building your network is that it can help you now, but more importantly, it can help you down the road. Hey, listen, for you, you can start your networking process now if you haven't. 
I highly encourage everyone to do it right away. And it's nothing that you have to invest any money. You just invest your time, and it will pay off with money down the road. So not only three weeks from now, three months, but three years, and then you will be in a position uh, similar to me that you can help others. That's the you know hey that's the pay it forward model, right? But this really it's more about that. It's it's how you leverage your network once you have one. I work with people all the time, every day, all day. Of, hey, you know what, Matt? I haven't started my network. I don't know how to start that. And once people get on that diving board and they jump in, they realize, you know what, it's a really simple process, but it needs to be done the right way first. And then once you start building these contacts and these connections, there's a real special way and a unique way that you can leverage those contacts uh, to, build, to build your circle, to build that inner circle. So something I, I place a lot of time in because it's so, so critical. Here's some additional points, and I mentioned it just a minute ago, is ask for informational meetings, not interviews. It's a big mistake. People, you know, whether they use a job board or whether they're posting something online or whether they get the chance you know, to network, they're saying, wait, well, do you have any jobs? You know, I'm real, I'll do anything it takes. Uh, that, that conversation right there is, is a whole different ball game about, hey, I'll do anything it takes. But ask someone for informational meetings. You know what, when it's, when it's phrased in a way such as this, hey, you know what, listen, I know, you know, you, example, Mr. and Mrs. XYZ, you've, you've been, you know, in the canned foods business for 25 years. I really want to get into that industry. I, I see you as someone that I can learn a lot from, and I imagine you can perhaps recall what it was like as you were trying to break into the industry. Would you be willing to carve out 10 minutes just either over the phone or if I could come to your office? I'd love to learn from you. People love that. It puts them in a position as they're an expert, a subject matter expert, and they love talking about themselves. We all do. Ask for informational meetings. You know what? Have some flexibility, but if you do know what you want, ask for exactly what you want and have a specific goal in mind if you've got it. People love that. If you've got a direct goal and you know you have it in mind, ask for it. But if you're not, if you don't have that specific goal in mind, that's okay. But be flexible. Be true to yourself about what you think that you do best and be able to clearly verbalize that. Again, that's through your positioning statement. Be clearly in how you can verbalize your skills to these potential employers. This is something that takes practice. This is the positioning statement. It'll be once you say it, 10 or 15 times, you start to own that language and it becomes clear and confident. I'll put a little picture up here, up here of uh, this is someone that football fans may know of, they may not know the face outside of his uniform, and this is legendary wide receiver Jerry Rice. I've had the luxury of working with him uh, throughout his 49er career, and I put that up there because it's a motivator for me. And you know what? You should also strive to refine what motivates you the most. And for me, what motivates me the most is the impact that I have on others, the others that I can partner with, the others that I can collaborate with, the others that I can coach. I grew up as a kid watching Jerry Rice on my couch as a, as a kid and having the opportunity to then work with him. It was a huge motivator. It was a wonderful experience, and to this day it still motivates me. See if you can try to find what motivates you the most. Start drafting out some notes. See, what that, see, what kind of, see where that takes you. Here's a quick recap. This is, again, going to sound like I'm someone's parent. I'm not. I'm just a career coach. I'm always looking to teach and share, but own any regrets, you know, that's going to come about because there's always going to be a few. Hopefully, we try to minimize that. You know, I admit my mistakes, and that's helped me. Admit to yours. Learn from the experiences. When you make mistakes, look at it as a learning experience that uh, you can really grow from. And, of course, at the end, you always want to live an authentic life, and that seems like such a trite comment. And really what that means is just be true to yourself. When you're in an interview process, for example, or you're, you're having an informational meeting, don't think about what the person's going to want to hear you say. Think about saying what you really feel. Be authentic about it. Be genuine. It will take you somewhere. Believe me, it will take you somewhere down the road. Again, here's a little offer that I want to make sure as we kind of wrap up. You know, for anyone that uh, you know, is going to be on this, uh, that's on the call today or on the webinar today, here's a little offer that I, I want to extend, uh, and I'm really, I probably shouldn't, uh, but I, I like doing it anyway because uh, it's, it's just a fun way for me to kind of give back to the community. The first people that who email, you know, email me with the subject line, VOTD Coaching, I'm going to offer you, you know, a special bonus, and that is two free coaching sessions. So I'm happy to make that offer to the Link Seattle group uh, just because I'm so... Uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, take, take the opportunity and present to you guys. So that's a little, uh, a little reminder. So who's here? Who's ready to get in the game? I hope you guys are, whether it's the sports industry or whether it's another industry. My 4P coaching model is quite universal, and I welcome the opportunity to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. Please reach out, or you can find me directly on my website, voiceofthebox.com. 
and uh, here's my email address. So again, I appreciate the time to uh, talk with you a little bit today. Thanks very much, Michael, again, for having me on. Well, thank you for being here, Matt. And we'll be back again on, on more Fridays with uh, introducing other Link Seattle group members.